That's right. Today, jurors watched that video of the shooting that killed James Boyd, but also what led up to it, the weapons that were used not to kill, but to try and control the situation. Now, we talked to KOAT's legal analyst about each side's perspective of that video. It is video that was seen worldwide. The defense played that video for jurors, showing frame by frame less lethal tactics that all failed. First, the flashbang, a diversionary device so officers could take Boyd into custody. It was supposed to land near James Boyd. Instead, it bounces in front of him and then bounces. It will bounce here. I'm using the cursor to identify a, a boulder, a granite boulder. Then two rounds from a taser shotgun. That too failed. Then the third line of less lethal, the canine police dog. He was supposed to take Boyd down, so again, police could handcuff him. The dog instead went after Boyd's bag. Then the dog's handler, Scott Weimerskirch, got within nine feet of Mr. Boyd, who was armed with two knives. What Officer Weimerskirch will tell you is to this day, he cannot tell you why because he can't ask his dog why the dog didn't bite. As KOAT legal analyst John Day explains, the prosecution and defense have very different perspectives of this video. That dog officer, um, for whatever reason, moved forward, moved toward Mr. Boyd, and that may put that dog officer in danger, and that those is Officer Sandy, Officer Paris had no choice but to shoot. Uh, Mr. Boyd. Then there's the prosecution and what they want the jury to take away. What was happening was that Mr. Boyd was in the act of surrendering, in the act of obeying the officer's commands when he was shot. Okay, coming up at six, police say that they asked Boyd to drop his knives 33 times. Boyd threatened to kill officers 19 times. That is all on video and audio. That's coming up at 6. The state says Boyd was mentally ill, and that should be factored into this. Again, all of that coming up in one hour. Live downtown, I'm Nancy Laughlin. Back to you.